Hey, everyone. Hey, Shripat. How are you doing? I'm hey, doing good. How are you? I'm all right. What have you been working on? Yeah, so I'm working on a few stuff on this pipe, mostly around this pipeline security uh, for the Tecton. So I think yesterday I submitted one TEP to Tecton community that was much around improving the provenance with chains, basically extending some capabilities into chains. Sweet. You submitted that into the architecture, you submitted that on Tecton. Uh, Tecton, uh, let me see. On the Tecton project, or are you talking on the reference architecture here? No, on the on the on the Tecton project. Oh, nice. Thanks, Jason. You just shared a link. Tell us a little bit more about this. Yeah, so uh, I think in the chains, we know, right, it is basically doing a great job in collecting the provenance of uh, individual tasks. Right? And in this, we are basically saying that when the pipelines execution start, we need to collect the evidence from the event. When the event was created, start with the event payload, capture the uh, that that event payload, whatever parameters you, you pass to the, uh, your pipeline and task, they get passed properly. So we are essentially, uh, when we collect the provenance, we collect it end to end. So this was the event you can verify, and this is how the pipeline was triggered. And this in the, we'll also capture the provenance of pipeline run, because that's essential to mm -hmm know the ordering in which order tasks were run and what which all tasks were run uh, so it's basically covering some more uh, base there uh sorry to jump in i just got here are we talking about tecton chain yes yeah so so the uh, the proposal that uh, we have submitted recently i put it oh. in the change channel as well yeah okay Sorry, does the proposal include adding support for provenance for pipeline runs? Yeah, pipeline runs okay, and event, event uh, payload also. Right. Thanks. Oh, I haven't seen this yet. OK, thanks for sharing. Yeah, great update. Uh, yeah. So, well, great, great turnout. I, I see everyone who's been working hard at, at this of, of all, all of all of those who spent a lot of time, probably like Alex and Priya, you're among the two who've done the most. In the absence of in the absence of, of Michael, I would I would defer with you. Like, what do you see us missing? Like, how where do you feel like we're at at this point? Like, you have a better sense of gap analysis, and you're also going to be the ones talking to KubeCon about it. So, uh, I I know you feel a sense of urgency because you want to be able to have stuff to talk about in the show. So. Uh, Priya, Alex. Um, I think so. Our talk is actually pre recorded, so we submitted it last week. But we basically were hoping that the draft of the reference architecture could at least be out for like public review and public comment by KubeCon. So I don't know if anyone has like an idea, like if they think that would be possible or not, but. Um, I think because I was, we kind of were recording the video the past couple of weeks, at least I haven't actually looked at the doc probably in a week or so. So I, I'm gonna look at it now and see where we're at. I don't know if Alex has anything you wanted to talk about. I think, I mean, I think that it depends on what we are intending to have available for public comment by KubeCon. So I think we have, um, cause, cause the document is sort of broken up in, sections that are, you know, it's, it's kind of a funnel that's getting more and more specific as we work through the document. So we have a, a, you know, the first section, which I feel like is in pretty good shape. It needs a little bit of refining, but I think it could be ready for people to start looking at and commenting on um, in, in a few weeks. Um, is that section that is like, 
here's the theory of what a software factory looks like, right? Um, and then it gets progressively more sort of, and then here's, you know, how you actually build it um, as we go down, right? Um, and, and so I think like, depending on where we want, um, like if what we want is to say, you know, here's the, here's the theoretical sketch and we want people to comment on that and, and give feedback on that before we get too deep into the weeds of implementing this thing. I think we could have that ready to go in a couple of weeks or in a few weeks, not, you know, hundred percent ready to go, but ready enough that we could invite people to start um, putting extra eyes on. Does that make sense? It does. So sounds like we want to lock down the first section let's don't mm -hmm. let's don't add extra stuff there maybe like a once over so when we do get a review like people can like address more of the substance rather than hey you have a typo here you have a grammatical error so we, we can just tie it in like a very light like editorial not, not even editorial but let's lock that uh that theoretical sketch do you think like that's represented or like that's starting to take shape from the rest of the sections or that's like the diagram we're missing that we punted to cncf to do the illustration for us myself hold on sorry i think that um in my head that is everything up to the prototyping section so i think it's it's the it's the inputs outputs it's the components and the um, actions and capabilities sections that kind of go through the stages, um, the as of yet unnumbered stages. Um, I, I think that like those sections have a lot of meat in them already and they need a little bit of refining, but I think that those could be refined over the next few weeks if we really focus on that and, and be in a place that they were ready for receiving extra feedback and comment from folks who haven't been uh, buried in this for a while now. Um, I think it, from the prototyping section on is where basically it's mostly empty pages. It's just an outline still. Um, and, and that's where, and it's also where I think it starts to get much more, um, down into here's how this thing would actually be built. And we're not yeah. be ready for that until we feel good about the stuff above that line. Does that make sense? It does. So we should probably shift all of the focus to the stuff about above that line, like, complete those gaps of refinement and then all as a group like try to knock down the, the prototyping or like have a discussion capture down that discussion on, on the approach is that what yeah, you're I saying think, i think that makes sense like even for the next week if we just focus on everything above prototyping then i feel like we could see michael's demo next week and then really kind of be able to fill in the prototyping set, uh, section once that's done how would um, how would the group feel about putting that in the document itself, like maybe just above the table of content saying, you know, this is where it stands right now as of this date. This is what we're going to try to not move. And this is what we're going to try and concentrate on. That'd be great. I, I think the next thing someone's going to say is going to say, do you want to do it? <laughs> I can do it. Okay. I can do no, 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 it. Yeah, okay. Great idea. Axel, I'll, I'll own it. So, uh, progress, current state, current state, uh, I'll write something. Uh, plan, uh, lot steps. Okay. Um, one thing to, to try to close, I wanted to do a quick run through of the comments, uh, some of them, uh, it's unclear how we want to proceed on the suggestions or what's being pointed out. There's some discussion. So as we can try to start closing down on the top that we just scrolled through, this is ticket has been open for the diagrams. Um, let's look at this next one. Matt Moore, SolarWinds, code cover are specifically mentioned. Uh, should we call out the Linux kernel example? Sure, let's call out the Linux kernel example. Unless anyone disagrees. What do you all think? Non-contentious item? Perfect. Talk about 
across the supply chain. Andros, could you zoom in? Yeah, I can definitely do that. How's that? Much better, thank you. Oh, that's, that's a little too much. Oh, that's perfect, thank you. I can just zoom in in the, in the dock, but not sure that that's gonna zoom in the, the comments. That might work too, if we're trying to read the comments. Mm. Okay, this is not contentious. It should be elaborated. Uh, salsa seems important to call out. What do you all think, Axel? Priya. Yeah, I mean, we mentioned salsa later on in the doc. Like, I think if you just scroll down a little, you can see that they reference like the salsa definition of hermetic. So it definitely makes sense to explain what it is. I could put in a few sentences. Let's remove it. If if you feel like, hey, let's introduce it up up top, and we're gonna we're gonna reference it later on. Might be mm -hmm. might be beneficial, but uh, for the time being, let's remove that additional work. Okay. So sounds like till this point, other than two slight additions up to here, is like no changes above this mark, right? Let's do a line break. No changes above this line. Uh, secure software factory. This is missing outputs, but the diagrams are getting redone. Let's not touch that one. That's addressing the section title. Hold off till firm on other components. Brandon, are you on the call? I don't think so. Well, I interpreted that as being about the diagram above as well, uh, but I could be wrong about that. Okay, let's let's remove it and I'll check with them. Alex, you, you want to talk about this right here? Um, yeah, we had we I had I had made that big chart of all the inputs and outputs here, and then I felt like maybe it was redundant to have the giant chart and then also have all the paragraphs of text that we had after it. So I moved the chart into the prototyping section. I figured that's a good place to have um, something that's summarizing all of this content. Um, it's still in the doc. If we want to move it back, we can, but that's, that's all that that means. So Absolutely. You don't, you don't know that. good call. Thank you. So we could remove this. Uh, there's some discussion on like, well, is, is it technically accurate? Are we advocating immutable references? I think that's a good idea to advocate for immune for well, I think we can advocate for images with digest ideally. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree. Yeah, yeah. That, but I think immutable references just in general is beneficial. I mean, mm -hmm. I just want tags. Tag, it, it can be confusing if you mention tags because they go, okay, a tag, but in the end, that's still not an immutable reference. Who's that? Yeah, I agree. Is that Andrew? It's Andrew, yes. So would you reward this? Would you just say hash? Would you say like digest? I would say digest. Replace hash for digest. So an immutable digest. Immutable, immutable digest. Because you want to you emphasize the immutability of it. That look good? Yeah. And immutable digest. Thanks to DTF. Do we have Matt on the call? Good feedback. How do we incorporate it?
I think that that question, that confusion is even more reason that you want the immutable digest, right? Like we can't even say that having a mutable tag means you get the latest thing. It, it, you can't even be sure that you're getting the latest thing because of caching. Mm -hmm. So I, I, we I think we could even rephrase this thing. Sorry. Sorry to interrupt. Sorry, I, mean, I was going to say, you can't even be sure you're going to get anything. Maybe it'll be unavailable at that specific point in time and everything, you know, will they'll create new problems. That's the problem right. worse than that in a way. Right. I think we could rephrase this to take into account the fact that like tags are bad for now a handful of reasons, not just that you might, you don't know what you will get. Um, yeah. Or we could, now that we've, now that we've, uh, uh, advocated for immutable digest, we could remove this sentence entirely as as redundant, but I, I don't know how, how people feel. I like the language you used. I think it'd be beneficial for the reader to understand the reasoning behind it. Yeah. And even like the digest doesn't guarantee you're, you're going to be getting latest. You should be aware of this. Like, expressing that like the way you conveyed it even in those exact words like it's it's very good right like we're, we're educating people so uh i'll leave it to you uh jason right yeah uh, that's not me <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll, I'll just i'll plus myself in and, and, and take okay. that yeah i don't have my email on my contact so that's why it's not coming up uh, the next one, uh, this is also true along, along the same line of thinking. Uh, how do you all feel? Replace it. Yeah, your, your typing is really audible. Oh, sorry. Mechanical keyboard? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. The mechanicalist. <laughs> Jason, uh, replace, accept suggestion. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I think we, I think uh, we can rephrase this to say that it is. You are not guaranteed to get the latest thing. You, it is literally un, impossible to tell what you will get when you ask for things by tag. Okay. So you you got this. It's in your hands, man. Okay. Uh, I don't have I don't seem to have edit access or co uh, comment suggestion access either, so I don't know. Really? Huh, interesting. I'm not uh, sure if I need to be part of a group that I'm not part of, but I don't think we're group controlling it. Uh Drop me a DM with your email and I'll add you when I'm not screen sharing or sure, sure. yeah, we'll sort it out. Um, cool. Uh, cryptographic material. Uh, fix that. Pipeline definitions. Outputs, artifacts. Uh, Brandon Mitchell, good call out. We need consistency between artifacts or, well, the spelling, like American spelling, British spelling. The the spelling doesn't bother me, just that we've got artifacts to find in multiple different areas. In the oh, book. gotcha. So we like have a whole section of saying this is what an artifact is. and That's what consistent. you're saying. So we keep reiterating that. Yeah. So, uh, would you mind pulling the other mentions here? Yeah, I can. I can spend some time on that today. Awesome. So, um, a quick question, Andres. Um, in question outputs, always. it's not just the artifacts; it could also be vulnerabilities, right? Um, or a report that says, "Oh, you got these risks and this image or something to that." Is that not considered an output here in this context? As additional outputs, or as well, yeah. like things you want to like metadata you want to store. Yes, um, mm. I mean output is yes. This is approved to move forward in the CI/CD pipeline, but then an output could could totally be vulnerabilities, a list of vulnerabilities from a scanning tool that was blocked because of your bug bars, not allowing it to move forward. Yeah, 
Uh, have a read at the metadata document section uh, on their outputs and, and see whether that speaks to that. I think it does, but okay. would be good to, to make sure that that is clearly conveyed. Okay, I'll take a yeah. Thanks. Good call out. Brandon, I think your interpretation of this is right. How do you suggest editing? I guess that's on me to give you a suggestion then. Okay. If if it needs yeah. discussion, we can we can talk about it here. But yeah. As long as my understanding is right of what we're talking about. What's your understanding? Well, we say public keys, and I'm assuming we're talking well. It even says in the heading that we're talking public sign keys. I just want to make sure we're talking about the certificate and the certificate chain. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think so. Marina? What do you think? I'm just about the, the wording here. Sorry, say just that again. About like the wording or sorry, I got ahead. About the wording. Like I, I know you're kind of like delineating like between like signing keys and certificates. Um, and I'm not sure who, who wrote this this bit, but if, if we're talking about, well, signing keys should be included as an output of the software factory. Oh yeah, I think but, we can generalize that to signing to keys or certificates because like whatever it is you need to get that trusted root. Okay. Um, which, because like, you know, certificates include the signing keys usually, so. Yeah. Generalization. Are they, are they like conceptually, we can treat them as outputs, but are they really outputs? I don't actually think that they're really outputs, honestly. I would, cause um, I mean, if you trust the, them as outputs from the same places of the things that they're verifying, I feel like that that, that, that kind of ruins the separation of concerns, right? Between the, the, the um, generating trust in the keys and then verifying things with those keys. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think that goes to the last sentence I had there, which was saying the trusted root needs to be distributed to an external mechanism. And then what we're really talking about here is just the certificate chain that gets you that link from whatever key you sign with up to that root. Oh yeah, like the yeah, oh yeah, like yeah, either the delegation chain or the certificate chain. Yeah, that makes sense as an actual output of the the software factory. But um, I wouldn't. Yeah, I think we should definitely make sure that's very clearly delineated, though. We don't want people mistakenly thinking we're suggesting getting your root of trust as an output. Right. That was my concern reading this too. Do it, keep it out of band. It's it's an external system. Or like external cryptographic material. Cool, so uh, we'll look for the suggestion. Uh, it sounds like plucking it out from on their outputs. It's, it's like the sensible thing to do just for clarity. Alex, how does this interface with efforts to reduce indeterminism and reproducible builds? I think we've resolved this in the, there's a footnote down there um, that I think addresses Brandon's follow-up on my question. And I think, so I, if everybody's happy with how that is phrased and with the footnote, then I think we can, we can mark this one done. Brandon, Aditya? To feel that address. That looks it. good to me. Yeah. Sweet. That's what I love to hear. Uh, we don't have the involved parties in the call, and it's not clear what this says. Take it out for now. Or anyone. Yep. Yeah, I think I was tagged on that as well, but I don't remember the exact thing I was supposed to add there. So I think it's okay. mostly included in the previous ones. <laughs> if it comes back. Uh, okay. Metadata chain. Pick it up. Yeah, I think we covered that in the metadata link. I just added all those things. Uh, so I was not sure what chains is supposed to do. So I think it's redundant at the moment. 
that was Sri Pai. Yeah. So I uh, just saying that it's probably redundant. I added those in the metadata links. I believe that was the intention to add that in this section. So we can remove this. Okay. Sounds great, man. Thank you. Uh, okay. Components, components. Alex, how do you feel about this section? Like flow and relationship to like talking components after outputs. Is that ordering it, logical? Yeah, I think it orders logically. I think, um, yeah, I think it works. Okay, just checking. Uh, probably just someone to read through, make sure that it's cohesive, but no new content in this section looks pretty fleshed out. We're on page 14, pipeline observer. Review and feedback. Priya, Michael says he spoke to you. Mentioned that pipeline supply chain security might be a better fitting term. Is it? Are we coming up yeah. with technology? I mean, me and him had talked about it, and I think we wanted to get like see if everyone was okay with that. But I think that kind of just references what chains does. I don't know if it makes sense to like put it in as like a generic piece of the pipeline if it only refers to one tool. Um, yeah, and people might not instinct instinctively associate it to chains. You know, if yeah. they go to the project and, and you don't use the term anywhere, it's like, is this really it? Dustin says it's yeah. a manager. Why? I mean, like the idea was like, maybe instead of like your build system taking care of your supply chain, like maybe you have something watching your build system and doing it for you. Um, but since change is really the only thing I can think of that does that, like, I don't know if it makes sense to call it out, like specifically. Do others have a strong opinion about it? And can I ask, is it intended? Um, no, I should not be just a headless voice. Um, is this intended to represent that you extract some source of data uh, in order to make statements about the history? Or is it that history has to be automatically emitted as a byproduct in a particular way? Um, it, it can be like the way that it works, like the way that we have it set up right now is that like Tekton chains will just watch your builds and then it'll sign things for you. It'll generate provenance for you. Um, and that's all stuff that could happen in the build itself, but it's just like the architecture of how Tekton is set up that we made, we like built it that way. Um, so it's not like a requirement to have that component. I feel like it makes sense to get rid of it personally. I mean, I, I, I was curious because I've done with other tools. Um, I've, I've done explorations of collecting detailed data and being able to reconstruct histories uh, from that data. And in fact, the, the tool in question has gone on to implement a feature called causality where you can basically take a particular version of something and say, where are all the places it turned up and how did it get consumed and how did it get pushed forward? Um, which is probably like a different perspective than chains gives you, but still is arguably an observation of the pipeline. That's true. I guess like what it's doing is a little different, but it is still observing the pipeline. So I think mm. there's a case to have it, even if it's at this point mostly um what's the word I'm looking for? Uh advocative. There you go. There's a fancy word. Um I, I can't think of the word I actually want to use. Um essentially you know like a, a a sense of where we want the world to be even if most of the world is not there yet mm -hmm. does that make sense i guess Definitely. there's going to be a tension in the paper right between the ideal world that may or may not exist yet versus what people would do with tools they have in hand today yeah which essentially means what can you do with jenkins and marketing you call that category category design oh today i learned yeah you're trying to you're trying to create the future you want and not the other the ones that others have described so and that's why it's now called observability instead of monitoring that's right is is the question whether we want to 
advocate that this observer is a separate component or that something somewhere, whether it's it, you know integrated with the pipeline orchestrator or outside, something should be reporting, collecting this information and reporting it somewhere. Um, like Priya said, Tecton Chains is a separate component, but that's mostly organizationally and operationally and doesn't you know, fundamentally need to be a separate thing. Is there a reason we would advocate for it to be a separate thing or do we, is that just because we're talking about chains without using the word chains? Yeah, I don't think we've talked about like if we're advocating one way or another, I think. I think we're, we literally just had this in here so that chains was covered in case we, because we did like, we do bring it up later on. Um, yeah. And I, yeah. I thought that the question was like, is it, does it make sense to have a whole section here if it's really only referencing one tool? But it seems like there are other things that can observe pipelines that can do interesting stuff. So maybe, yeah, maybe I think leave it in. if it's describing a separate component that observes and reports, then that does only, only describe chains today, as far as I know. But to Jacques' point, other things do this just integrated with the tool or other things do this with you know some other way. And so if we just are more vague about or less prescriptive about how it should be organized and operated, then it can include uh, causality or probably some Jenkins plugin or probably some other thing. Yeah. Case, it's, it's useful. We should still have what chains does. We should still have what causality does. We don't need to be prescriptive about how it operates. That sounds good to me. So semantics aside, looks like there's nothing under this section at this point. So I think we have moved I that. Uh, we moved it. Content, uh, content under that circulatory component. I think it just uh, that was a placeholder. I think the content was moved under the latest section. The next section, the circulatory component, I think it covers what was there in the pipeline observer. Okay. So, Jack, you, are you saying, say, say, use something other than observer and do introduce the notion of a manager and allude to other tools? Like, I, I think observer says good word as any. Um, the, the goal seems to be um, some way of, of, um, assuring yourself that a particular history occurred. Uh, so for me, that would be, that would be close to uh, uh, either one of process mining, but that's designed to deal with like vague and structured, not very well put together data sets. Um, and then a sort of a branch off process mining, which is conformance checking where you have a definition of what should have happened. And then you have evidence and you compare the two to see whether what happened happened and only that happened and chains is like right. a really strong statement of that and causality is a, a reasonably strong statement of that um so I, I guess the question is like going back a step it, it seems like the purpose of having an observer is to do that conformance checking is to assure yourself that no more happened than was supposed to happen and no less happened than was supposed to happen that only in exactly the design of the pipeline occurred. Yeah. Does, does that seem right? It does. It, it actually would be great to capture that in text, you know, so so people know like, hey, why 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 is the group leaning so strongly towards chains? And it's 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 that because it's not about causality, is that really high fidelity to the conformance. If you could, if you could include that somewhere where you see, see best fit, it'd be super beneficial. I'll, I'll dig out a, at least dig out some links on conformance checking and, and fling them onto the comments. Sweet, yeah, we haven't we haven't like spoken to that. That's like solid rationale behind it. So without spending more time on this, uh, removing it for the time being. Uh, Scroll, scroll, scroll. Hmm. Brandon, your your cursor is on it. What do you think? I was just adding item F when I saw that uh, the comment came back <laughs> asking, asking if the scope made sense and said yes. Yeah. So I figured I'll just throw it in there. If we wanted to accept both, that would 
make your yeah. job easier. Let's see, let's see who has a perspective. Jason, Sherpat, others. Yeah, I think I was, I was planning to add some section under this, uh, but uh, this last week, I'll add this, uh, some content under that. So the idea was essentially to break the admission controller and talk about different places or different contexts in which uh, we are applying that uh, uh, gatekeeper policies. So uh, I will add some contents in there. Okay, Alex, what's, what's your take on this section? Do we want to incorporate stuff? Here at this point, uh, let Shrupat do that part and then make a call on it. I'm fine with that. My recollection is we spent a lot of time in the last meeting discussing whether or not we needed these to be three separate items here. Um, and I guess they're conceptually three concerns that the emission controller is looking at and whether we wanted to um, write them out as three separate um, concepts, basically. Um, so I think I think if if somebody's willing to take a stab at that, we we tagged it in the last meeting um, and go for it. As far as I'm concerned. Okay. And it's it's really speaking to a component performing different roles depending the stage in the life cycle. Yes, yeah, that's right. Okay. Well, uh, Brandon. Yeah, so that's the one where I was throwing my comment on was the second item there. And yeah. it's just saying, do we want the ability for the mission controller to do some mutation thought process there is you might inject some metadata labels or annotations saying this has been verified as a signed image and then potentially something like Spire can look at that and take, take action on it. Not sure Spire can do that, but something should look at it. I need to dig in deeper myself. But just adding annotations on the workloads that are running in the cluster. Yeah, for sure, hundred percent. So with with like this tying it back to this, like we're we're really talking about add deploy time, right? So it's all it's all admission. It's just a standard admission, right? Is it really three separate things? And like, hey, try to try to like enrich the metadata as much as possible, and like look at like introspect different as much as you can of it. Yeah. So the idea was when you ex execute the pipeline, right, the pipeline ex start executing. We need to basically check whether you are allowed to execute the pipeline, whether the pipeline was blessed mm -hmm. to begin with, right? So that's okay. the one part. Then uh, there are various images that you are using in the in your pipeline. You need you basically bless you check whether you are allowed to execute those images, right? So it's basically different, uh, uh, as you said, life cycle or different stages where we want to basically put these uh, gatekeepers or these controls. Okay, so as someone pointed out here this already speaks to to these and like i think this simplifies the job or like put this in the respective buckets is that is that fair or does that sound right uh, i think this the later section was there already uh, we probably need some elaboration or some illustration in the option but we can uh, i can take a look we can decide we can reshuffle from the contents Okay. We need one more, which is the one that Brandon said. Yeah, something like like Spire would only get kicked in once you have uh, instantiated a workload. And yeah, thought process is the mission controller would check that it would be a signed image. The mutating okay. image controller can say, here's the label said it was signed. That it was signed, and then, yeah. And then Spire can kick in and say, okay, I will give you a certificate because you're running an assigned workload that I trust. Yeah. Thing is like Spire doesn't have any, any custom testers for that today. Like what some okay. people do is like they've, they've hashed the get, the get URI and they've had Spinnaker 
Uh, the selector, what I'm looking at right now, says it includes pod labels. Yes. So if you pass that as a label, uh, you can you can check for the presence of that signature if it's if it's a match or not. Yeah. So what I'm looking for is a way that I can pass this assigned image from the mission controller into what Spire is looking at when the when the pod is running. And so I thought there is a mutating mission controller could put that label on there. Yeah. And Spire needs to know what that label looks like up front. So you need to yes. create a registration entry for for that. Yes. Cool. Uh, so I, I placed that here uh, so it doesn't get lost. Cool if I resolve the comment. Yep. Sweet. And then my comment, I think I was resolving it with the F bullet point too. OK. Actions and capabilities. Uh, Alex, all stages of mission control again. But it does belong here, right? We're, we're talking about it from, from a different vantage point. Yeah, I mean, I think what we've done so far is we've we've laid out sort of defining what all the different pieces of the factory are, and now we're laying out how they interact with each other in the different stages of the factory running, right? And so one of those, well, really in all of those stages, everything has to pass through an emissions control check, right? And so I think that's what this is. Um, I think that um, I was, my comment was, my the scope of my comment was too narrow and based on what's above it probably needs to actually there there this this section should be rewritten a little bit to reflect more of what's in the admission control section that we just were looking at um so but you can clear my comment out i think okay so the comment is be very crisp that this is not the cd piece of it you can apply admission control and CI when when those builders are running containerized and Kubernetes, right? Somewhat. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, sorry for being late. Uh, just just my my thing finished up. Um, I actually had a question actually about that. I think one of the other things that we want also want to make sure, right, is that you're doing admission control for. Um, the secure software factory itself, right? Like you want to validate that whatever um, images you're using, you know, let's say you're using Tecton, you know, you want to make sure that the images are are, um, are are you know correct. And then in addition to that, yes, you also want to have admission control inside the build, as you mentioned, right? Like you want to essentially validate that if I'm um, running a particular build build image or something like that, let's say I'm, you know, using Kanako, what well, was the Kanako build image also signed? Um, that sort of thing. Correct. Okay, uh, stage one, Alex. But before we get there, do we need additional details over here? And if so, what are those details that are missing? Yeah, I think we need to, I, I can take a stab at that if you want, but I think we just need to make sure that that reflects the scope that we've talked about in the in the previous admission controller section, that when we're describing how it interacts with the other pieces of the pipeline here, that it actually reflects what we've said above. Um, yeah. But I can, I can flesh that out just a little bit more if we want. Perfect. And Michael, also a great place to incorporate what you just said. Yep. Alex? Take us through your next comment, please. I think you can clear this comment. I uh, I just was, this was originally like the last stage in our pipeline. And I thought it probably needed to be closer to the top here because presumably we want to secure all of our data flows before we start sending data through them. Agreed. Uh, this diagram, does it belong in prototyping or it's good to have an illustration here because it's been like a, a lot of words till this point and very little diagrams. Yeah, that's why I just kept it there, but uh, I'm okay to basically move it to prototype section. It just, it, it's not prototype, it's basically just showing, describing the content there. What do others think? I'm comfortable with it there. Alex, yeah. Marina? I was gonna say, I think diagrams here will just help people break up the text, I think it's good. Marina concurs. Let's resolve that. 
uh, state zero. Michael, uh, tell us about this. Yep. Um, so this one was the the one that maybe the emission control piece would probably uh, solve. So yeah, this was was solved. Okay. Alex, should we move this into inputs? Scroll up just a little bit. I'm trying to get my bearings for where where we are. Oh, um, yeah. I think that. Yeah, my recollection is um, there was a lot of redundancy here to what we've already said about source repos in the input section. So we perhaps can um, just consolidate this content into that and not rehash it here. Um, but if we think it's important enough that we need to say it twice, then that's fine too. Well, we're, we're framing it here as like it's out of scope, but let us tell you about it anyway. Have it. Um, but let's consolidate it and we can say like, Hey, a detailed explanation of this is, is beyond this scope, but yeah, not out of scope. If, if we're talking about it, um, you got this we're one. Saying, we're saying this whole paragraph is out of scope. And then we also point out the second bullet individually is also out of scope or that's where I'm trying to mentally sort out what's happening here. Yeah, I'll I'll take a pass at consolidating this with what we've already said about source control repos in the input section, and then hopefully that will resolve um, a lot of our ambiguity here, um, and we can take another look at it next time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. My only comment, additional comment on on that piece that yeah, like I think providing guidelines of just saying whatever you are are using should either be trusted implicitly because of some you know because you do trust it or it should go through some process to sort of establish that trust you know just as as uh to just give an example of what i was thinking about right is is if you let's say don't trust the tecton directly because you're like hey i'm not sure if they're doing all the right stuff then you need to apply scans or manually validate those things before you then say, hey, I trust this and I'm going to sign it with my key now as that sort of baseline to then have the um, have the secure software factory go through it. Yeah, sounds sounds reasonable. Uh, I I see Brandon solved his own comment. Uh, we should probably a little bit more clear if it, if it like you do scratch your head to like, what does this mean? Like go through a strong pipeline. But I think we we have an understanding of what we're trying to to express. Consider deleting. Does anyone feel strongly about uh, this sentence of the pipeline framework generates an API exposed through scheduling? Blah blah blah. Uh, it does seem like overly over explaining. Yeah, I didn't get the feeling for how this was explained. The secure supply chain. It was just more describing one of the tools were recommending and how it works yeah it feels pretty prescriptive prescriptive sorry delete Alex, axel i could barely hear you say that sorry i was saying it feels pretty prescriptive like just saying really just that's how it needs to be done without as, as you were just saying um giving really a reason for that so delete or reward uh Think about it. I'll, I'll defer yeah. this one to you. Uh, and yeah, like, is the software factory like bearing responsibility? Like, also, let's think about this one. Like, the subject in the sentence, like the use of the word "responsible." Maybe there's a, maybe it's concerned with the ensuring. Okay, we don't have a lot of time left, uh, so we could shift gears and go bottom up. We could like just try to go over the things rather than every comment, like anything that has like a threat like this one that might be contentious, uh, but there seems there's agreement be here. How do we resolve dependencies? Do we want to change this to dependency resolution to how are dependencies resolved? I think I, I can I can take a look at this one too. I, my my overall read was that this particular stage as it's written right now actually stretches into several of our stages and that maybe it needs to be split out and and re uh reworded so that it's a little bit more concise in its scope um and i think that would resolve some of the, the questions that are here 
Yeah, I think as per what we put in the white paper, um, the thing that we want to really sort of focus on is conceptually your build should have access to its source code and dependencies already locally, like either through a shared volume or through some other non-network mechanism, right? You know, yeah, like the idea, we, we should make the builds hermetic, but I also know that depending on who you talk to, uh, they, they have different definitions of what truly hermetic means. But I think that the main things are you should not be reaching out to the internet as part of your um, as part of your actual build step. Like that should have happened before the build step, gone through all the right validations and checks. And then your build itself should only concern itself with stuff like compiling and packaging. Okay, perfect. Let's let's sidebar that that discussion uh, to the two of you, Michael and, and Alex. Let's close up on it. Uh, Brandon, good call out here. Uh, pipeline definitions, separate build images. Uh, yeah, I think this one that Michael's going to jump on, and we define a whole bunch of inputs here saying dependencies, credential sign keys, and the pipeline definition, but not the actual images that the pipeline is running. Okay. So don't resolve it yet. Leave it here. So yeah, we just need to add an extra line in the table. Okay. On the line, well, several extra lines, right? but one for the time being. Um, Alex, you're making an assumption. So this is getting into the, the prototyping section. So I don't know what, how much time we wanna spend on this, but this is just, I, I was trying to think about how we wanted to structure this part of the paper earlier. And I made this um, table here just to kind of get the wheels turning and maybe people will um, like this idea or not like this idea, do whatever you want with it. It was just, you know, trying to, to flush out what something might look like. But my my assumption here um, in this particular example of how I worked this out for this stage was that everything's passing through the scheduling and orchestration platform. In my head, that's based on how the Kubernetes API handles everything that you don't like directly call the scheduler, you call the API, for example. Um, and that, but maybe that, so maybe that's too technology specific and we don't wanna say that in our, prototype, maybe it is, uh, but maybe it reflects something that we actually do want to say. So I don't know. That's That was just leaving that there for discussion. Okay, fair. And it does it does serve as a, as a resource sheet for the prototyping. So we wanted to make the, the most substance like pack it in here, right? And, and here's what you were saying at the, at the start of the call. We need to close up on, on things further up before we shift all of our attention to this, but what what direction, what guidance do you wanna to give to folks of like how to pitch in here or go about it? Um, I think, well, so I think Michael has some ideas about prototyping yep. as well. And I'm sure that he, so so I'd love to hear his, his ideas. Um, here, what I was doing, I'm assuming that we are not yet um, trying to actually flush something out in code. And so I'm making something that is like a combination of pseudocode or some sort of cheap knockoff on UML or something like that, that just sort of describes how things flow through um, the various components that we have outlined in our sort of more theoretical section above. Mm -hmm. um, if people like the way that I have done this, I'm also finding it kind of a useful exercise um, to try to work out something like this for the different stages and helping to figure out like, oh, have we missed something in our descriptions above? Um, because there's, you know, a necessary step that has to happen here for this stage to work and we don't talk about it or something, right? Like, so I think it may be useful in that regard too, to start playing around with this. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, uh, but like I said, the format is just, I just like, threw something down and if people like the format that I have have put down here then great we can use that and if people say nah this is this is not the way we should do this then I'm happy to hear other suggestions too and I think Michael has some ideas as well he does. yeah so the yeah the only thing I wanted to add is so I I do have a more or less end-to-end -end demo of this thing mm -hmm. um using majority of the tools as we've described here not stuff that is internal vendor stuff um uh, but 
so if, if folks are interested, I down to even show after this meeting um, uh, what what that sort of thing looks like. Because I think that there are still some sort of interesting, like you know, caveats or or things that uh, do or don't currently exist, um, you know, in the outside world. I think even as we were building some of this stuff in the demo, uh, people were building the features that we needed to actually have uh, to show this thing. So so there's definitely probably going to be caveats there and and you know uh, whatnot. But it's if folks are interested, I'm down to show it, and it's also all open source. So if we take parts of it then use it as as what that prototype is or we don't use it, it either way it's it's all good but i do, do want to show it yeah that'd be super beneficial uh and i think what priya had shown when when we first kicked off would also be very beneficial here as something to anchor around uh and we can we can use those both i i see folks starting to drop uh i'm sure like folks like Axel and Jason have a lot of desire to jump at this. Like we've we've yep. been leading into this, and you have your perspectives around how to prototype. Um, yep. I don't know if if like folks want to like make their own personal copy and like work on their own on a prototype, and then we compare prototypes. Um, do we want to? set up some time before like the meeting next week to try to like make progress on the prototype as a group. Uh, I'll put it out there. Like how do folks want to, want to attack this section? Um, so, so one thing just to kind of add on there, uh, just, so everything I, uh, we've built, um, my team and I have built has, is also based on a combination of majority of what other folks in the, in the uh, community have built. So, it's using, for example, um, the the process for tecton chains that Priya showed off. Is, I'm blanking on the person's name, but he goes by a developer guy um, using uh, the work that he had done with regards to OPA for policy stuff. And there's lots of other folks in the community that we've sort of, you know, we sort of said, hey, okay, they've taken this approach. Seems pretty good. Can we now implement this as part of that sort of end-to-end -end thing? Do you want to dump that here as a straw man and we iterate over it? Sure. Okay. Priya, Jason, Gary, Brandon, how do you all feel? Yeah, that? that sounds good to me because um, I think like since I did my demo at the start, there are like a few pieces that we've added in. So like I never had an emission controller or anything like that. Um, so I think that Michael's demo will probably like kind of have like the core components that mine had. So I'm good with um, using his as like a jumping off cool. point. Jason Hall. Yeah, same. Sounds like a good demo. Can't wait to Andrew see. Block. Yeah, I agree. Cool. Alex. Sounds good to me. Cool. Then mapping. Uh, probably we, we want to complete the stables. Uh, that's kind of like low hanging fruit. Uh, future work. Fair. Okay, uh, some appendixes, let's remove them if we don't have anything. Like, I don't think we want to over rotate on filling in missing content here when we still have quite a bit to do further up. Anything we said at the start of the call that we try to get to, recover, or speak to that we haven't? Priya or Alex? I feel pretty good about where we're at. Yeah, I don't think that we've missed anything that we said we were going to do at the beginning of the call. OK. No, not, nothing that you said during your talk recording, but <laughs> that's not going to show up by that date. <laughs> we definitely kept it intentionally vague, so I think it'll be OK. Good. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're able to modulate. What's that? You've totally ruined our talk. I know. Well, <laughs> I, I, I told you how to blanket statement the talk, right? Uh, cool. That's that. Uh, we're at time. Uh, whoever wants to hang out and we can talk more, but. See yeah, you. I'm, I, I'm even I, around. You want to do the demo? Like. Sure. Yeah. I can, I can just give it, show it off right now. I mean, it's literally. Sure. 
I um, see Trishank. Hello, Trishank. Have you been here long? Hello? He's Can people me. hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. sorry. What was I called? I was just saying hello. Have you been here long? Uh, no, sorry. I, I kind of joined late like uh, Michael too, unfortunately. Okay. You All joined right. together. I'm just saying hi. Um, hello. Michael, yeah, do it now or like I think you said, well, it, it is sure. It is noon, right? Uh, I'd um, love to see it for those that... that oh, yeah, let's see the demo. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my schedule so. just freed up after <laughs> just now. So, um, okay, so I'm going to give me one second here. Uh, the Thank you, uh, Thanks for being uh, accommodating. And oh, yeah, yeah, no problem. Well, I, I've been giving this... I've been giving this demo a lot lately, so um, all right. Well, exercise. Uh, yes, yes. Hopefully, uh, just came out of another one of literally this. So hopefully, this uh, all works. Um, can you all see my screen? Yes. Okay. Cool. So I'm gonna show what this sort of thing looks like. It's it's a lot of it's based on what Priya showed, but I'm also going to show sort of just like. Hey, what is an example like uh, supply? You know, supply chain attack, and why we need to be really rigorous in all the different areas. So, um, so it's running. Um, so it's going through, doing the normal sort of stuff. Right now, I'm just running Canico. Um, I'm doing some additional things here, like you know, creating S bomb and doing a few other things, and, and I'll I can get into the details of, of what's going on there. But I think you know, once again, want to shout out to literally everybody in the community who it's like each of them had a different piece that they kind of figured out, and I'm like, oh, if I take this, and it should be uh, we should be able to get all this in there. Um, takes two three minutes here. Um, and it's doing all the sorts of stuff that Tecton does, right? It's going to be signing with uh, the various keys. And one of the things that this demo doesn't show is all the various keys we'll probably need and have uh, in all the different areas. Right now, I'm just mostly just using two keys just for, for the demo. Um, OK. So it did all this stuff. Um, and if I go and you know do... Uh, Crane LS. Um, whoops, let me do that here. So, right, if I do this, you'll see. Oh, and before, I, what I was building is this Rust Hello World program, right? That's all I was building. And you can see it has all the signatures. If I go in and um, I go and do this, right? I can go and validate a couple of things that it's, you know, the image was signed. Um, I can validate that uh, in this case, chains um, has the attestations uh, for it. And so these chains attestations are essentially salsa level something compliant. I'll, I'll need to kind of do some additional validation there, but they're salsa compliant, yada, yada. But what's the problem here? Like, okay, I, you know, I'm validating this stuff, but. What's the problem? Well, one of the problems is if I just now pull this down and uh, run it, it says goodbye world. Well, why is that? Well, the reason being is if I go over to um, oops. Right, I have this Docker file here where I'm replacing the cargo compiler with my own bad compiler. And because I wasn't validating from the Canico side that my parent image was signed, that's how the attack came in. And so the parent image wasn't signed. And so that's how the attacker got in. And so now, even though I'm signing all the right stuff, well, I wasn't validating the signature of my parent image so that's how the, the attack came in. That's why you know, we need to be really rigorous about all the different things we're validating and checking. So now let's assume for, for uh, an example here, right, that I'm, um, I'm, I'm gonna be building 
you know, against a real signed version. And we're going to be, or actually, you know what? Let me show you one more of this, actually. So it's going to do all that. Um, and now let me show you how I would validate against it. Once again, some of this stuff will be managed, I think, by Canico internally at some point. But um, if I go into uh, my image here, comment out, whoops. And there are currently um, some issues with the verified Docker file in Cosign. Um, there's a race condition. So recognize that that bug will get addressed at some point. But if I go back and rerun it, now we can see what, what happens here. Uh, wait, did I not? No, hold on. Did I not uh, save that correctly? Oh, my bad. I uncommented something where it's now not tabbed right. Give me one second. <laughs> Oh, I see. Yeah, I don't know why that. That's why. OK. Um, anyway, so now what you'll see is it doesn't seem to like my YAML first. What <laughs> demo gods? Hold on. Uh, Make sure kind of cargo pipeline, pipelines. Yep, there we go. Uh, typo somewhere. Um, but now you can see here, right? Well, the parent image wasn't signed. So the image doesn't get built. So now let's just show what, um, what that would look like with against the real signed image. And then I can show you how policy is then enforced um, continually. So while uh, that's now going to be rebuilding, the um, while that's rebuilding, let me just show you uh, some of the stuff. So I'm currently using two um, admission controllers uh, for right now. I'm probably going to switch to one at some point. But um, using Kyverno here to sort of validate a couple of things. One is I'm validating that the Tecton images themselves that I'm using inside here are signed. And that includes some of the Tecton task images that are like the Git image um, and those things. I'm validating that they're signed by Tecton. I'm for now just saying, yep, I'm assuming the Tecton images are good because they've been signed by the Tecton folks. I trust them. Yeah, yada. And then from here, I'm also validating, whoops, that. Uh, I'm validating that the images, the other images that I'm using here are signed with my key, right? So if they are not signed with my key, then um, they're, you know, don't, don't run them. Uh, and then separately, as another proof of concept, because as far as I can tell, Kyverno can't do sort of like remote API calls. Um, I'm using OPA for what, like, I would consider almost like a production um, level uh, uh, policy control. So now that that's all done here, it got built. Um, it got built against the signed image. It validated it uh, over here. Um, once again, all same caveats uh, are, are in place here. Um, so if I do a Docker pull, <clears throat> right? You know, I don't need to show you that the image would already be, um, you know, signed, all that sort of stuff, yada, yada, yada. Now, one of the things I can do, right, is I can, you know, one of the things I can do is I can run it. It now looks like hello world, great. But the other thing I can do is I can show what this should look like um, running in production. Right, so if I go and I run this random curl, Right, I want to run my curl thing. Oh, it doesn't work. Why? Well, two reasons. One is that curl image wasn't signed. Right, so it's not going to run in my production namespace because I have an admission controller in there. And the other reason, um, it doesn't have a, a 
uh, doesn't have a valid um, S bomb. Uh, whoops. Valid. Oh, it doesn't have a valid signature. It doesn't have a valid S bomb. There's another thing in there which um, I might have inadvertently commented out, which is uh, let me go and double check that real quick. Uh, Michael, can I ask a quick question in the meantime? Sure. Yeah, so what is actually preventing this from running? I, I'm not too sure if it's Kyverno or OPA right now. It's OPA. OK, thanks. Um, separately, for the inside of the Tecton namespace, I was using Kyverno um, just because it was a little simpler to get set up originally. But for the, the additional stuff like validating of the actual attestations and validating of some additional metadata in here, uh, it's essentially this. Um, What's your S bomb constraint? How are you expressing the S bomb constraint? Uh, so right now, I I realized that 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 was actually a POC, which I'm not sure why it's including that constraint right now. Um, uh, I'm not finished with that one, okay. but uh, the 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 thing that I am doing actually that's probably worthwhile showing is. I'm right now just taking an SBOM of the source files mm -hmm. and sort of pushing that out as an example. So if I were to do, um, and this is some additional work I'm, I'm doing here, right? Is I have this SBOM sources file, I can S get it. And I have a, an additional, some additional tooling I'm using to sort of, um, and I have to validate it against the key. So oh, uh, keys uh, cosine.sbomb.hub. And uh, whoops. Right. And so I can now use uh, what did I just do here? Oh, I got to actually dash key. So uh, this is how I'm getting that file. And so I have essentially built an, AP, built an API based on a lot of the work that um, the individual who goes by a developer guy on, on GitHub, uh, him and some of the other folks, what they had done uh, around sort of validating attestations and validating these things, I can actually then you know, use the same thing to do like just arbitrary blobs. And so I can upload arbitrary blobs, sign those arbitrary blobs, and those arbitrary blobs can just be whatever metadata we want. And so ideally what we have is we have it almost like two steps, right? You have an attestation and the materials cited in that attestation should also be, if possible, included in the registry or included in the repo alongside your actual image. And then you could always go back and audit, right? Or do some additional validation against those things. And it's just like very simple to actually do that. Um, yeah, so I'm... A, I think it's there's a typo somewhere, but the other thing that I'm actually doing here is I'm I am validating uh, Tecton chains provenance here, and so I'm actually going in to this API, which once again the, the API is based on the work that those folks had done. Um, our team, my team has and myself have written a bunch of code to actually add some additional things on there, but hey, it pulls down the attestation, decodes it essentially for right now validates that there is, you know, it's of tecton chains provenance type, right? We can include additional metadata in there and um, whatever. But then based on all of that information, we can go and say, yep, yeah, it has all the right attestations. They're all in the right format. They all have using the right predicate type. If we need to do an audit after the fact, we can go and look at the materials that were in that attestation and go and say, hey, this thing attested to this thing. Let me double check the SBOM or whatever. And then if we need to, we can also go deeper level um, stuff in there as well. Like let's say, hey, we discovered a particular um, you know, hash is bad in the SBOM, right? Okay, cool. We can say, um, you know, we can do a further level audit, but we can say no new applications will be, get deployed if they have that in their SBOM. And we can use this to sort of continue to do that sort of thing. Super cool. How, how do you want to detail this prototype in writing? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, so the docs there, are always so hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I was just about to say, yeah. So um, when it comes to a lot of this, you know, sort of stuff, um, 
you know, first off, all this code is, is open. So if other folks wanted to take a look, um, feel free. Obviously, you don't have my keys and you don't have access to my repo. Um, so you'd have to change a few different things, but largely it should um, work. But in writing it up in there, I think um, that's where I want to have a conversation with Alex and a few other folks uh, to kind of figure figure some of that out because my, my headspace has been so deep in the code. Um, I don't think I'm uh, the best person to ask right now regarding that. Um, but I think generally, I think we have a good idea of how these things should link up. Like you should have your admission controller be able to make these sorts of requests either via an API or through a plugin, right? Some of this stuff like here might go away once some of the plugins for OPA are finalized because there's supposed to be an OPA plugin for Cosign. Yeah. Um, some of it, some of that might go away or we might still include it, you know, depending on, you know, this sort of thing that I wrote up can do some higher level validation. Should that be a plugin in Cosign versus being a plugin somewhere else? I don't know, but we can in the very least keep it sort of very high level saying, you know, your admission controller should do these things. Your, yeah. um, you know, uh, uh, your your build, you know, we, we're assuming here like you have signed the base level builder images, or you're using or you're trusting the signed things. Here's how you would do that, right? And I think we can kind of keep it at that level. And then um, when we actually try and show off an actual prototype implementation of this thing, um, we can then get a little bit deeper. Here's here's a far fetched idea. How about we don't write about it? How about we include? little ASCII theater clips and like short videos into each of the stage sections and say, hey, here's what, what should occur. Because trying to express this in, in words, it's going to take a lot of effort versus we can we can include like, hey, maybe we don't push this out as a PDF, but we do a, a GitHub page for it. And we have we have like those clips play there. Or like we have those clips when we check in this into the repo. Yeah, yeah. I mean that that seems fine to me. I think um, the one thing that I will say is that some of this stuff, obviously, like um, will will need to be cleaned up a little bit. Uh, I think uh, you know even before this meeting, I was demoing it to other folks internally. Um, yeah. Uh, so, so some, you know, once again, none of this is using any sort of internal whatever, but, um, and this is all using the open source stuff, but I think the other thing that's probably worthwhile in highlighting is, um, some of this stuff, like even these pieces could have only been possible in the past, like three days, right? Some yeah. of the features did not exist, uh, two or three days ago. Well, it's a, it's a prototype, right? And we are yep. like, you are pushing the. You are racing the bar. Uh, Alex, how do you feel about like, hey, let's let's try to like, yeah, write, write like a sentence or two, but like include a kit clip and do some something that is, exemplifies every stage. Yeah, I think that's a that's a good approach. Um, yeah, so I guess my so my uh, stepping back, my my sort of meta question here is, in terms of how we have structured the paper so far is um, this demo slash prototype is definitely tied to very specific tools, which are the tools we're planning to recommend, right? But the way we've structured it so far is sort of moving down this funnel from very very theoretical, getting gradually more and more concrete, right? And so my, so my sort of meta question in terms of the architecture of the paper is, um, do we want this to be the next stage after our theoretical overview of a software factory, or do we want this to be a sort of later piece of the, of the puzzle that we say, okay, and so after we've described sort of what the components look like, now here's one way you could build it. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, royal we aside, what what's your yeah, like, sorry. selfish what's what's your selfish perspective? <laughs> what would you do if this was? If you're I mean, personally, it? I think let's go for it, right? I mean, I think that we we have a set of tools that we are kind of coalescing around. Um, we have a work, you know, Michael has has put together an awesome working demonstration of how those tools fit together. Um, like, I think that it's fine to say, um, you know, here's here's how you know if 
if we were building this from scratch, here's what it would look like, right? And and then you know, and then we can have a an addition that says. And then here are some other tools that you might consider if you, for whatever reason, don't want to use Tecton in your environment. Here's something that you could do something similar with. Or if you don't want to use X, you know, here's another alternative. And yeah. have that mapping afterwards that says, you know, we built it this way, or Michael built it this way, rather. But you can um, you can build it. You know, you can you can substitute in these other things if you want. Yeah. That's kind of like go knock yourselves out because like yeah, right. <laughs> those things are, are not quite there. So we're also talking like, hey, to the best of our knowledge, this is the only implementation of this today. We want to steer that direction. This is a reference. Sure, you could you could like build this with something else or like you could reverse engineer it and like refactor it all if you want, like uh, Michael. Yeah, yeah. The only thing I was going to add on there was... Um... I think we can maybe just show the example and maybe throw in some caveats of like, if you do plan to use another admission controller, make sure it does this mm -hmm. in order to like, otherwise it just won't work. Right. Like, so as an example, right. Like, um, Kyverno is great, but like, it's missing a, a couple of things today it, that would prevent us from sort of using it in that holistic way. Whereas OPA does have some of those features and some of those features are just literally an HTTP request feature where I can have OPA, you know, call out to an API, pull in information, and then just parse that JSON any way I want. If your admission controller has that functionality, go ahead. You should be able to swap it out and be able to do whatever you need to do. And the same thing goes with, you know, when it comes to a CI CD system, right? Like if your CI CD system can sign the individual tasks and provide all that metadata for like a run of all these things then go ahead. If it can't, well, you know, chains can. <laughs> um, and, and so that's where, you know, Tecton plus chains can, I should say. Yeah. I think that's a very, I mean, I think what you're saying is- Data very, onboarding very has been a time consuming- Sorry. Sorry. I was going to say, yeah, it, it's important, like, it's important to be descriptive rather than prescriptive. I think you, this is in this case, you're saying, you know, this is how we build it. And we build it because it has a, these technical properties like that you need, but also be it adheres to these principles that we were describing before. So what really matters right now is that you follow the principles because that's really what we're trying to convey are those main principles. But then practically when you want to build it, then you also need these technical capacities to build it like this. That being said, you know, as long as you adhere to the principles, that's what really matters. I mean, this might be a very sort of, you know, intellectualization of it, like very high, high level, but that was, that's my understanding. Like we want to, you know, it's great to show a practical example of what it is to say that, you know, to show that it's not actual just fluff and we're just talking about theoretical stuff. But simultaneously, you want to make sure, as you were saying, Andres, you were saying, like, you know, if people can build another way, you know, knock yourself out. It's great if there's multiple implementations, as long as they, you know, don't betray the principles we're trying to convey. And I think maybe that's a great way to structure it in terms of the writing is to say, yep. all right, here's the demo. Uh, and we chose this tool for this reason. And if you want to choose something else, follow these principles. Um, I think that's a, that's a good way to, you know, so that we're not, we don't have to write out how you implement it in every single step because we have the demo that's gonna, that's gonna do that. But we can instead say, and this was the rationale for choosing this piece for the demo. Yeah, agreed. And there's a, I think there's a large, you know, at this point in time, aspect to it. I mean, as Michael was saying, you know, some of this was made available, like became possible three days ago. So saying, you know, this, it is like this also because this is how it can be done right now, probably, you know, goes a long way to explaining the choice of some of these tools. Yeah. Like if, if you look actually at some of the code I've been pushing out, um, some of the code is like my, my co-based image, right? Because I had to recompile, you know, some of this myself, and, and push some of these things out. Some of these things are not in released versions yet. Some of those versions should probably be coming soon. Um, but yeah, I, I think that just need to make sure that that's crystal clear to folks so that they don't go and say, oh, wh why can't I just do this thing? It's, it's, it's in the demo. And it's like, well, actually it's, it's in the demo and it's probably in main inside of a lot of uh, folks repos, but maybe hasn't been released today. So I also don't know how we want to say that when it comes to the demo, right? Like what versions of the software were you on? Um, we, at this point, I think we might have to say we're on versions of these pieces of the software's hash 
IDs, you know, com hash commit IDs, um, because we're at that level, um, which is also not ideal, right? Because it's 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 not as nice as you're saying. As long as you're on version one point X of Tecton, you're good. It's like actually, as long as you're on this commit ID of Tecton, you're good. Can we highlight as we're writing that, like what some of the changes are or the proposed, the, the pull requests are or whatever, the, the, the particular changes that need to be made to Tecton as it exists in version one dot whatever um, to make it uh, work with the, the, the design that we're putting out? I mean, I think to some extent with a lot of these things, given that, um, and Priya, Correct me if I'm wrong. I think we we had kind of talked about this before. Is um, some of some of that work, like the the specifically the uploading of the issue with uploading chains to um, to the image itself. Uh, I think some of that stuff can just you know if if it's in the next release uh, that's coming up soon or whatever, we could just put it you know once it's there. Um, I think largely the 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 thing luckily for us is a lot of the tools that we're talking with. I mean, most of the maintainer, you know, maintainers are part of this conversation at, at some level. So I'm sure if we said, "Hey, look, uh, we want to go forward with this. Can you include that feature in the next release? You know, can you include this feature in the release and release it so that we can then cite it?" I think we might be able to. That might be the easiest. Yeah, definitely possible. So at least with chains, we're going to do a release today. So the bugs that you were facing, like for the demo, should be resolved. I think the like more complicated part with Tecton and chains is like adding the Spire integration, just because there's like a formal process to adding a bigger component like that. Um, and I plan on starting it, but it definitely will take a while to get like approval from all the right people. Oh yeah. So one thing that wasn't in uh, my demo was was the Spire stuff specific, specifically because of um, some of those issues. Like some of it, uh, there actually I think is one or two areas where Spire is being used, but a lot of areas it's just using the um, the long lived signing keys as it stands today. Yeah. Cool stuff. So how are we tackling it from here? Like. Michael, we don't want to put it all on you. So like, how can we help you? Like, um, forward. Yeah, no, I'm definitely down to, you know, uh, maybe after this call out of band, um, talk with Alex, you know, we can talk a little bit about some of the details of how to get it to writing. Um, definitely on board to kind of, you know, uh, record some, um, uh, uh, record some like actual demos, uh, of the actual thing. And you can record it once, just do an end-to-end -end run oh, yeah, yeah. and we clip it. So that's fairly straightforward. Sure. sure. Uh, and we can do yeah. po some post-edit. Like we can we can even just like, have you used ASCII Cinema to record your terminal? Uh, It's been a while, but yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we could just stitch it to like, well, for the Visual Studio stuff, we could just, we could just include, um, the files or, or like a snippet of the file and people can expand it and we check in those into the repo. So everyone just gets like a glimpse of like the code behind the scenes, but it I think it'll be very neat if, if we make the paper interactive and people like look at this clips. Yeah, um, that's definitely something I can look at. Um, the, the, you know, I think the majority of stuff I'm going to be doing over the next couple of days myself is one of its um, cleaning up the demo to to make it also a little bit more um, right. Like largely, uh, all the scripts are there where people can build the stuff. The problem is obviously some of it's using my GHCR repo. Um, you know, I want to be able to allow folks to sort of inject their own, you know, whatever their own repo, and it should automatically just swap out everything that they need to do, and will automatically build all the things that they need to, to sort of run that demo. Um, that's obviously just going to take a couple of hours to kind of sort out. Yeah. But yeah, b beyond that, you know, um, I am, you know, uh, down for whatever. I think the only thing is uh, have a couple of things later today and tomorrow morning um, internally, but then a lot of it's going to be uh CubeCon prep and similar for the next couple of weeks for me. So yeah, same for a lot of us.
You know, one thing with with demos, like sometimes we we do like this progressive build up of like, hey, let me let me give you the overview and these are the parts, and then like people get like they are not necessarily aware of like where you're leading them towards. Like I've seen people like flip the script and do like the payoff first. So if without any explanation, you show like, hey. I'm, I've run a pipeline and this thing didn't get admitted because it wasn't signed yep. or it wasn't. And then you backtrack from there. Uh, we could take that approach, right? And, and do it in reverse as well. Um, I yeah. think you, you, yeah. hit all the, you hit all the things in the demo you did. The one thing is, well, I've because we ran over the meeting, I, I get sidetracked and, and I felt like it was a little bit lengthy, but we could probably shorten it by reversing it. If that helps, sure. obviously you do whatever works for yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do a couple of more dry runs and I've been giving this demo to a lot of different folks at a lot of different different levels. Um, so I think, yeah, like th there's definitely, um, you know, we can be a, a, as a high level or as low level as we need, right? Like. For you folks, right? I, I'm keeping it fairly low level on, in the actual sort of like, hey, this line in the code where we don't necessarily have to to go that uh, that deep. We can literally show, hey, you know, here is a config. You can refer to the config over here to if you want to follow along, and don't have to kind of go through each line. But as long as folks understand, generally, like, oh, you know, I understand emission controllers, and I can see that yes, you're calling that out as you're verifying the image, and you're calling this out as these things. Um, if they can follow along, we don't necessarily need to go hyper deep into it uh, either. 100%. Just to catch you up, uh, or probably easier, like just the five minutes of the, of the, like the first five minutes of the call, if you watch the recording, like I think we have a pretty good uh, approach or, or like we have a good plan on how we want to close up the paper. And like we're not adding anything, any extra content to any of the initial sections. Uh, some things that need to be tightened up through the like middle sections of the yep, document, yep. and then well, you and Alex are on point on the on the prototype. Uh, pre Alex, anything I I didn't convey, or I am not possibly like I might be oversimplifying. Makes sense to me. Cool. Is that a thumbs up, or that's like you're racing it, like no, Axel, Brandon? I, I want you guys to like also be able to roll your sleeves and, and get action because I know you've been super eager to get into actual architecture and prototyping. So link up to to these guys. I'm sure you have like a lot of thoughts and well, I've seen a pretty solid perspective. So stack teammate, uh, a DTS same. Mar, I haven't heard from you, but welcome board to the team. Hopefully you found this worthwhile. Yeah. Thank you. I had to be on mute, but uh, it was very insightful and everything here was amazing. Well, Brandon, you were saying? I was saying Michael knows I'll reach out to him all the time. So, yeah. <laughs> when, when are you showing this to the financial services work, working group? Uh, probably in the, the coming weeks. Uh, it's kind of a, you know, that sort of thing is 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 complicated for for various reasons, but like uh, already there's there's some folks talking about could you show some of this to some uh, folks who are generally associated with the regulators um, because they, they're they're interested in you know better understanding like what you know it's it's one thing to say hey uh, you guys you know everybody needs to start thinking about their supply chain security it's another thing to say this is what that actually means right like you know it's it's about doing these things in such a way where we are sort of validating like you know with a lot of the stuff that we've shown right if, if i pull out if you know for example somebody compromised um gcr but they don't have tecton signing keys it'll still it that will pop up here right um and this is i think it also does highlight some of the stuff regarding um the signing keys right now are really really critical um, to to protect and there's things that still need to be done along those lines and then um, there's other things that obviously need to be done with regards to hey if you if we want to trust you we need to start trusting the fact that you're doing all the right things 
because you know to some extent if you if you say hey uh, like Tecton recently did we're salsa 2 compliant right cool i can check that attestation i can validate it i can validate the signatures and on my own stuff be saying yep you're allowed in my environment right um that sort of stuff is 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 i think the stuff that that they want to start seeing right and in fact with trust sort of model talk, it's a yeah, trust exactly. model we can share with the with the auditors and regulators it, exactly right and already obviously some folks are talking about from like the consultancies they're saying hey we'll come in and talk to to vendors and maybe do like a third party audit and certification process saying look we recognize you do not want to tell us all of your build commands all of your blah blah, blah and expose that to the world but you know we trust this third party auditor to come in validate all that and then they have some sort of signing attestation saying yes i am signing that internally they are doing all the right stuff right these are the you know all sorts of stuff that we want to be able to do and 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 whatnot yeah um, i've i've seen i've seen kpmg's risk unit start to dabble in that by the way i i got introduced to scott surovich yesterday uh to show some stuff i've been doing in the product side around formal yeah. benefits and uh cool it's all converging Yep, yep. And I'm supposed to have a call with him later, but he's he's been quite busy and on vacation. So we'll see. Uh, if, if, I, if we do have the call, I want to show him some of this stuff as something to also demo to the uh, FSUG as well. And also some of this stuff is stuff that the FSUG will be probably citing in the white paper we're writing up, right? We're trying to write up something that's kind of along the lines of, so you want uh, you want banks to adopt cloud native? Here are the sorts of questions we're going to ask, and some of those questions are things like, you know, what is your RBAC, what is your this, that, and the other thing, and so when it comes to even the services that we want to use um, internally, <laughs> yeah, um, as some of the stuff uh, that we want to use internally here is going to be a problem, you know, because um, to to be clear, like you know, I can't get into details on this call, but I can say a lot of the stuff that I showed off in the open source world we can't just sort of take that in internally and there's a lot of various reasons why but like the sorts of things that we're trying to do is show sort of a a from a um almost like a questionnaire perspective and then eventually a white paper perspective of what is your RBAC? what is your log retention what is your data retention how do people you know how, what is your data segregation model right like if if certain things are flowing through here that we view as being you know, publicly identifiable information, there's going to be significantly harder controls that you'll need to pass. And, you know, all those sorts of things that need to um, be sorted out. Yep. You are right. Cool. Uh, sounds like we could all use some time and yep. like uh, regain our, what, I don't know, balance. Like, I don't know, like get on with our day jobs and catch up with all this work. Oh man, the, the paper's pretty, pretty solid. Like it's just, we've we've done everything to pave the road and like lead in to the actual prototype. So some nitpicks throughout the, throughout the text, but other than that, like we're doing it, right? Yeah. What? Yeah, this is awesome yeah what's what's the principle of like time will will expand or contract uh for the amount of work you need to get done yeah <laughs> <laughs> i forget what, what that principle is but anyway alex probably knows but i'll, I'll stop rambling bye everyone